Hey everybody, I'm Ruby Lopez for Create Currents. Now today, I'm visiting Tony LaGrosse's Animal Rescue Foundation to find out why this place is getting so much praise from pet lovers all over the country. Let's go take a look. chatting with Elena Bigger. Now you are the executive director for Tony Lewis's Animal Rescue Foundation, right? Yes, I am. I'm thrilled to be part of this organization. It's done such incredible work over its 22 years. Talk to us about what originally inspired Tony Lewis to create this Animal Rescue Foundation. Well, it was a day back in May, a long time ago, when a cat ran on the field and Tony was then the Oakland A's manager. The cat was going to be euthanized because there wasn't a place where it could live out its natural life. And so that was the catalyst for um, inspiring ARF. And Tony and his wife co-founded the organization and we went from rescuing 11 dogs and 144 cats in the first year. We've just celebrated rehoming over 25,000 pets. Talk to us a little bit about what ARF does. Well, you know, our mission is really people rescuing animals where we go out to public facilities where animals have run out of time and rescue them. We bring them in, uh, microchip, spay, neuter, age-appropriate shots, and then place them up for adoption. But, you know, that's the core of our foundation. And But really what we do also then is take those animals and give their magic to people. I really love that. Tell me the slogan that you use, right? Well, it's people rescuing animals, animals rescuing people. And it really just leads into our whole people connection, the human-animal bond about how animals can make not only families feel better, but victims of violence, people in disadvantaged circumstances, the injured, um, and we even have a veterans program. Now you are very different. You're not just a shelter and placing animals and rescuing animals, but I mean, you have a lot of activities going on here from public education to training, not just for the animal, but for us as well, right? Yeah, yeah. and you know, that's what's so exciting is initially when we set out to build this building, we thought we were building a shelter, but really what it turned into was a community center. Um, we have over 500 kids rotate through the summer. Um, we received an award from Diablo Magazine for best summer camp. Um, we also host birthday parties, but there is an educational element there, um, you know, trying to educate children about how you approach an animal um, to prevent dog bites, and as well as we've got, you know, dog training classes for you, puppy manners, basic manners, you can even teach your dog to dance here at ARF. So aside from the events that you have here, you also go out into the community and visit retirement centers and stuff like that, right? Yeah, we actually uh, look at ARF as our national headquarters here, and we host a variety of community programs, one of which is very popular is our Pet Hug Pack. Mm -hmm. And we do visits to John Muir Hospital, Veterans Hospital, Kaiser. Um, we work with so many different groups. Uh, last year, in 2012, we actually reached out to over 117,000 people in over 2,100 visits. And this is all comprised of volunteers. But not just for adults, you have some for children as well. The pets are now helping them to read, is that right? Yeah, ARF is actually the only shelter in the United States that is actually certified and proven with the help of UC Davis that reading to a dog actually improves a child's reading comprehension, uh, speed of read, as well as empathy for animals. Now, what really sets you aside from other community shelters out there? Well, I think, you know, a couple things. One is, is you know, our mission of, you know, rescuing animals, but then developing the whole piece of where the animals rescue right back um, and expanding that beyond just, you know, Walnut Creek borders or Contra Costa borders. Uh, we also, as part of our national outreach, have a disaster uh, preparedness and program as well as um, a response team. So we just had a team come back from New York where they were helping with the animals that were displaced by Sandy. Um, these animals were all owned but the people couldn't bring them home with them because they had lost theirs. So uh, two of our team members actually were responsible for the care of 60 cats each and every day. Wow, that's pretty impressive. They were so energized and, and thrilled to give back to the community and when folks in New York realized that people from California had come out to help and um, our team is actually comprised of staff and volunteers because volunteers are the lifeline of our organization but the people are, were just floored that we would be so caring. 
Absolutely. Now, you mentioned volunteers. Now, you have to keep in mind, you do so many things, but when you get down to it, you're still a nonprofit. You still need help and volunteers and donations. So talk to us about the different ways that maybe people can get involved and help. Well, I mean, we are always looking for more volunteers, especially fosters, because a lot of times when we rescue, we're bringing in underage puppies and kittens that need a little bit more time in someone's home. They get extra socialization. They can become old enough where there uh, can be spayed and neutered, microchip and place up for adoption. But really, volunteers um, help run this place. We have over 50 volunteer coaches that run entire programs, whether it's our food share program. Um, we have an incredible thrift store in Concord, which is where our really started as a grassroots and grew into this amazing building. Uh, but the whole volunteer piece is just critical. Our average gift is $30. And a lot of times people walk in and say, wow, this great building, and you have Tony La Russa. Um, you guys must have all the resources you need. And, and unfortunately, our phone rings over 200 times a day, and we still cannot say yes to every person who calls. So we're always looking for additional donors, additional volunteers, you know, additional help. And aside from that, there's also other ways that you can have a little fun. You have a lot of events that people can contribute to or attend, is that right? Yeah, and one of the beauty uh, of our events is uh, right there in downtown Walnut Creek, which is Animals on Broadway held every May. Mm -hmm. Our partnership is Broadway Plaza. They're an incredible uh, supporter of ARF. And we shut down the street. They only shut down the street twice. Once is for Santa Claus and the other mm -hmm. is for Animals on Broadway. And we partner and collaborate with other rescue groups to bring animals down into the community so that people can really experience animals one-on-one -on -one and other nonprofits get the same exposure. We're all in this business together. You know, if we don't have competitors, if we can save a life and we can help another rescue group do that, that's really what we're about. I'm chatting with Lee now, who's a very valuable resource. You were a volunteer, and you've been doing so for quite some time now, right? Yes, I have. Since 2008. Okay, now how did you get involved with ARF? I was looking for a way to get involved with my community, and I've always loved animals. And so this is tailor-made for that. It gives you the perfect opportunity to give to your community and also to help homeless animals. Okay. Now, I would ask, do you have pets? But I think the question is more, how many do you have, right? <laughs> yes, I actually have, uh, both of my dogs are from ARF, and um, I rescued both of them from here. My, I have a little female um, who came in with five four-week-old puppies, wow. and I took her in and her puppies, and uh, then I have a little male dog who was actually found on the street, had been hit by a car, and ARF was able to provide him with surgery that saved his life. Mm -hmm. I have him as well, so I have two back now. I would say it's so easy just to walk in the front door and get the information you need, get the training you need, and make it very easy and um, a lot of fun for people to come in. And also I have to say that all of the people that work here are really glad to be here. So it's yeah. a great working environment, there's a lot of smiling faces, and um, it's fun to come in here and be around other people. Well, I'm chatting with Caitlin now, and you are rescuing a dog today, right? Yeah. Who are you taking home? Hello. Is it this puppy right here behind us? He's actually the fella in the window, right? Yeah. So how did you know that Juno was the right pet for you? Well, he came out here, and he's just like, he's all cuddly, and he is really cute. He is really cute. He is really cute. Do you know how old he is? One year. One years old. Do you know how many dog years that is? Seven. So he's the same age as you, right? <laughs> you guys are going to be probably getting along really well, right? Yeah. Well, I had a great time today learning about all of the programs here at ARC. Now, if you'd like some more information, possibly on how you can get involved and volunteer, or maybe find out about all of their available pets, you can always visit them online at arf.net.